Hello, I'm Ms. Miles, and we are going to review the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. Your learning objectives are that you'll be able to apply the Pythagorean Theorem to find missing side lengths in right triangles, that you'll work with and simplify radicals correctly, that you will identify Pythagorean triples, and classify triangles as right, acute, or obtuse use, using the three side lengths. In a right triangle, you could, as we see in this picture, build squares off of the two shorter sides and build a square off of the longest side, also called the hypotenuse. Turns out the sum of the two smaller squares in a right triangle will equal the larger square. Or, using symbols, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll be using this theorem today. In your first example, we're asking you to find x, but to write your answer in simplified radical form. Notice it's an isosceles triangle. And so we start with our 10 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared. Now we're going to square those numbers, combine like terms, take the square root of both sides, and now simplify your radical by thinking of 200 as 100 times 2, where the 100 is a perfect square. So there is the answer in simplified radical form. Let's try another. We want to find x. We start by squaring the two legs. And the square root of 20 squared is 20. The square root of 5 squared is 5. Simplify, take the square root, and we get that x equals 5. All right, now let's talk about triples. What are they? They are whole numbers, of course non-zero whole numbers, that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So in this example, we're asked, first of all, find A, then do the three sides form a Pythagorean triple? Well, we first write down the Pythagorean theorem, and we simplify the equation by squaring the numbers, isolate the variable by subtracting 144 from both sides. Now we take the square root of 81, and we get that a equals 9. And that, those three numbers, 9, 12, and 15, they do meet the definition for Pythagorean triples. Therefore, they form a Pythagorean triple, because they're whole numbers, which satisfy a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, now in this example, we are asked to find C. We start off by applying the Pythagorean theorem and squaring those numbers. 52 equals C squared. Now when we take the square root of 52, we think, are there any perfect square factors of 52? Yes. 4 times 13 is 52, right? So therefore, the square root of 4 is 2, and what's left inside the radical is the square root of 13. All right, same thing here, except we're not asked to find the hypotenuse. We're asked to find one of the leg lengths. So here's how we begin. Now we square those numbers. Isolate the variable. And we're going to take the square root of 160. And again, I ask you, what two numbers multiply to equal 160, one of which is a perfect square? Well, you might think 4 times 40. OK, but 40 itself has a square factor in it. So we'd rather rewrite 160 this way as 16 times 10. Now the square root of 16 is 4, and there is my, my simplified answer. 
you feel like you're getting the hang of this. Now the converse of the Pythagorean theorem says if you don't know for sure a triangle is a right triangle but when you test out a squared plus b squared and it equals c squared this theorem says the triangle is definitely a right triangle. So here let's determine if this triangle is right. Notice there's no right angle marking. So we're just going to see is 11 squared plus 8 squared does that equal the square root of 185 squared? Alright, let's do the math. And is this a true statement? Yes it is. Therefore this triangle is a right triangle. Okay, bonus question. Do these three numbers representing the side lengths, do they form a Pythagorean triple? Haha, -ha. they do not because that hypotenuse is not a whole number. All right, related to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If when you figure out a squared plus b squared, it's less than c squared, the triangle is obtuse. And if you draw an obtuse triangle and construct squares off of those leg lengths, you would see why in an obtuse triangle, a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. All right, if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, then it's an acute triangle. Let's look at an example. All right, we have a triangle whose side lengths are 13, 20, and 24. We are asked to classify the triangle. So we compare a squared plus b squared. We compare that to c squared. Let's do the math. And let's add. 569 is actually less than 576. So in this case, we're talking about an obtuse triangle. All right, one last example. Here we have side lengths of 11, 14, and 15, and we're asked to classify the triangle. All right, same thing, let's compare a squared plus b squared to c squared. Let's square those numbers. Let's combine the left side. And here, 317 is greater than 225, so therefore this triangle is acute. All right, just to summarize, I went back to our objectives and I phrased them in the form of a question. And I want you to be sure that you're able to apply the Pythagorean theorem and find the missing side lengths. Are you able to work with and simplify radicals? Are you able to identify Pythagorean triples? And can you confidently classify triangle as right, acute, or obtuse using side lengths?